Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We have a lot of exciting sections about digital marketing, sales, e-commerce, and many more. Make sure to download the VFAIR application on your mobile phone, which allows you to join the sections um, easier while mobile. With that, chill for a few minutes and watch our videos for exciting rem reminders before we begin the sections very shortly.
Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depends on where you are. Welcome to Brands in Culture, how Nescafe connected with Gen Z through gaming in China. The topic is already exciting me. My name is Luki from Nestle Indo China, and I will be your host for the sections. Just some house rules to ensure a smooth flowing sections today. Keep an eye on the chat box and make sure not to flood it with spam so you can catch important announcements and links on how you can engage with that via slido.com. You may see the chat box for the code to join our sections. Have your mobile phones on standby to scan the QR code on the slide and see career opportunity in marketing, sales, data analytics across the Nestle market around the globe. Great, let's begin the sections. Introducing our inspiring keynote speakers for today. Antonia Fakuha, Global Integrated Media Lead. Marcus Ma, Zone Head of Communications and Media, Corporate Marketing of Nestle Greater China. And Aurelia Noel, Head of Information and Transformation at Densu X. With 20 years experience in media, Half of that with Nestle, of course. Antonia has swapped Sydney, Australia for Wewe, Switzerland in 2021 and has overseen many transformations over her career. Marcus is the son champion to brand building the Nestle Way, a global marketing platform to help marketers to participate in accelerating the impact of Nestle brands with speed, agility, and above all, marketing excellence. Aurelia, is the first generation digital marketer helping Nestle team across the world to champion meaningful progress. And she also sits on the Global Dancer DI committee. 
with such a diverse experience. I'm excited to hear from our speaker how Nescafe integrated with leading gaming platform to deliver a unique and effective experience that deliver outstanding results. With that, Antonia, Marcus, Olalia, the floor is yours. Okay, great, thank you so much. We are uh, delighted to be here today to take you through um, an outstanding case study. Um, if you just move to the next slide, Marcus. Yeah, perfect. Um, super excited to show you this case study um, from the Zone China. Um, and it's really about how do we connect brands in with the culture? So taking a brand like Nescafe that has been around for a long, long time, it's a very well established um, and often seen as a very traditional brand within our portfolio, how they connect with Gen Z um, through gaming in China. And to me, it's a truly integrated media execution um, that, that kind of connects the physical world with the virtual world in a way that's, that's brought great success to the brand. Um, so yeah, we'd love to, to show you the case study and um, take any questions towards the end. Um, perfect. So our challenge as the brand, so we'll go back to where we started and how we started to, to crack this challenge that we had. Um, and here you can see that Nestle, uh, sorry, Nescafe Tin Can, which is the ready to drink coffee, um, the coal category was in decline and it was losing relevancy within the ready to drink coffee category, especially with the younger generation. And you can see there um, our key competitors in the market of China and how everything's, uh, you know, back sort of Suntory back 16, Starbucks back 18, uh, and us as Nestle were back 21%. So there was something happening in the category that we needed to uh, address and reverse the decline. We needed to look at our competitor set um, and see what it was that was changing in this category. Um, and it, it was critically important for us as a brand, as the market leader, um, our, our brand was really challenged in this space. And we looked at what consumers were doing and, and why they were coming out of um, the ready to drink format. Um, and they started to migrate, migrate to other formats, um, especially uh, sort of more energy drinks, which were not traditionally drunk in China, but they were gaining a lot of popularity amongst the young, youngsters. Um, so overall, we found that the, um, you know, the variety of imported drinks to China was increasing. So all the more reason for us to look at this as, um, you know, what was happening in the category, but then specifically for our particular product, which was Nescafe um, coffee, ready to drink format, how could we reverse that decline and become um, more relevant for our consumers? So um, if you can move to the next one, please. Thank you. So how did we tackle this? Uh, where to play? Um, so some key considerations that we took into account to halt the decline and return the product to ultimately to growth. So firstly, Gen Z. So Gen Z are notoriously hard to reach in media, um, especially in what we would uh, think of traditional channels like linear TV and, and out of home and radio, etc. So we knew to win, we needed to go beyond the standard sort of one way media channel to truly connect and increase our relevance in their lives. Secondly, with the drink being so versatile, you could use it for, you know, we could target people commuting or studying or, or after fitness, and they were all relevant um, consumption occasions of the product, um, but the wider category was already playing in these space. So we needed to identify a space for us to play in and us to own where we could truly immerse our product within um, the Gen Z world that we were trying to uh, reclaim um, relevance with. And then finally, we knew the whole category was evolving. Um, competitors were losing share too. Um, and you see there from the figure, the whole of um, tinned coffee in China was back 14%. Um, we know that China is now the largest energy drink market globally and is experiencing a really high growth rate. So it wasn't um, it wasn't about consumption. It was really about uh, relevance of occasion and, and particular product. So we needed to address and tackle our competitive set in a new and different way um, and tap into a need state that was around stimulation. So really going back to the roots of coffee and, and why people um, drink coffee. 
um, and that occasion. Um, so what would what could we do to ultimately drive distinction for our brand in a category that was declining uh, and was losing relevancy? And so what did we do? Um, we looked at uh, the gaming space. So a lot of these insights in terms of um, consumption and the uh, a need for stimulation took us to an area of gaming um, and we looked at, at why. So ultimately the gaming culture is synonymous with young consumers' daily lives. So the gaming population was huge at 509 million and of that 60% was made up of Gen Z. So really a great representation of our target consumers. And when it comes to sparking conversation and getting people talking about it, gaming really excels with over 500, uh, sorry, 5,000 million conversations happening in League of Legends alone in 2021. We knew uh, people really wanted to talk and it, and it was an area to um, of great stimulation in terms of conversation, but also connection um, within that particular target audience. Um, and we also knew that um, in terms of consumption, um, looking at data and insights, 56% of gamers said they consume, consume a drink whilst gaming. So we knew it was an area where people were, were um, uh, you know, able to consume and, and therefore it becomes part of that occasion as well. So with these facts in front of us, gaming was clearly the right strategic educate, um, occasion to win hearts, minds and ultimately wallets. So we framed up our game plan um, which was to establish gaming as the Nescafe tin can consumption occasion, communicating stimulation and self-confidence via seamless and valuable integration into Gen Z's virtual and physical world. It was a game, game plan that we put together uh, to truly win. We needed to own this space and drive relevant messaging and true integration with the, within the world of gaming that would resonate with this audience. Ultimately, we strive for a true value exchange. So we didn't just want to tell people how great um, the Nescafe tin can coffee tasted, um, but we really wanted to immerse our product within their world. Ultimately, um, we needed to make sure that we were set up for success. So these were the ways that we felt were, were the most obvious to, to succeed in this space. So the first one was obviously to drive growth, particularly with this Gen Z of um, 18 to 25 year olds. So we wanted to recruit um, the right audience to drive growth back into the category that we were playing in. And we wanted to make coffee and gaming synonymous with each other. So, um, you know, when I, when I think about gaming and, and when I'm playing, what's um, ultimately uh, the thing that springs to mind to enjoy and, and, and make my gaming experience um, even better. So we wanted to build authority um, through owning that consumption occasion. We knew our competitors were not playing in this space or if they were, it was only a, a toe in the water. Um, so we wanted to make sure we were really synonymous with that particular game. And then finally, to be relevant. So again, we, we knew we'd lost relevancy. Um, how could we measure the impact that the activity would happen in terms of driving consideration and trial for this product? So again, how could we get it back into when I'm in store or when I'm shopping online, you know, how am I thinking about when I'm going to consider my next drink? Uh, I've got Nescafe top of mind. And also how are we giving consumers opportunity to actually trial um, the product as well? So these were our um, success to win and going in with a with a mindset as if, if we can't measure success, we can't manage it. So we wanted to make sure um, we had that in place before the campaign kicked off. And then the other part, um, I guess, of context just to go into for the next part is we were building off a, a consistent base. So it wasn't as if we hadn't played in gaming before. We had dabbled and we had to, a couple of kind of very um, tell style placements in terms of TV, out of home, and, and we'd done some in-game advertising in 2019. And then in 2020, we did some more sponsorships of um, Honor of Kings. Um, we linked up with some famous players. We did some streaming and we, we started to elaborate on the pack. Um, so it wasn't a, it wasn't completely new. It was just more that we, we knew we weren't doing enough in this space to really impact the consumer and, and be, uh, surround their world with this with this coffee to ensure we were going to win. So it wasn't our first time playing in this space, but we knew we needed to do more to um, strengthen what we were doing. 
Uh, so therefore, we have to go big or game over was our strategy uh, for, for, for the following year to ensure we were we were really seen and, and there was no um, no doubt of the association between Nescafe Team Coffee and gaming. So we partnered with the number one online gaming, Honour of Kings, and we partnered also with the King Pro League, which is the number one esports team. Um, so we went really big. We did partner with the most popular game in China, um, to bring the most confident version of Nescafe by immersing ourselves within the biggest games, so we couldn't be missed. And I'll hand over to Aurelia for, from uh, Dentsu, who was, who's partnered with us on this successful campaign, to talk you through um, a lot more of the execution. Thank you, Antonia. So it wasn't really about only the sponsorship and leveraging the, the sponsorship because we had done that some of that in 2019 and 2020. It was about being there and being then there first. Remember when Antonia was speaking about building authority, owning parts, that ownership meant that we not we needed to be the best we just didn't need to be just better than last year we needed to really be the best because we only had one occasion of making a difference next and the way we've done that is multiple so i think the first thing is really about playing that idea of virtual versus physical worlds and that's making the most of that ip collaboration and the first thing was really about um, making sure that the can became a um, inerrant part or a critical co component of our campaigns and for that you know you saw in 2020 that we started putting some more gaming um, visual identity on our cans we decided to go one step further and really match the can strength to the characters so that you could choose your favorite character you could also match the strength of the coffee you drank to the character you wanted to play and each of those characters had special levels within the game that were activated um, through through a QR code. Next. So working with the physical and the virtual doesn't stop just at the can. We have to make sure we have that uh, link, so that mental uh, link between the game and our product. So again, we're thinking about consumption and that starts with the first uh, point of contact that the consumer will have with our brand. So we really leverage the visual identity of the game within all of our of our POS. So all of our in um, supermarket um, advertising, supermarket um, banners, etc. And again, you know, we we look we looked at um, you know what are the different uh, characters that we can leverage within the game. And how can we make sure that we use that visual identity to promote the whole range of our tin cans? Um, and if you look at the, the bottom, so it's obviously in Chinese, but uh, that will all be about, you know, what is this character strength and how our coffee is making the most out of that character uh, based on, on the product that we had. Next. And another thing we did is we looked into, and again, you know, thinking about the authority, thinking about being there when our uh, consumers needs us the most, uh, we had a full um, locally relevant um, out of home strategy using the visual identity. Uh, so, you know, when you are away from keyboard, which is what AFK stands for, um, we all we wanted to still have that uh, link between us and the game so we used a lot of that visual identity in commuting places in um, young people in the city in student places or even in bars and nightlife so every single occasion we had to match um, that kind of link to our key targets was leveraged in out of home as well next and one thing that you may not know um, is that Honor of King has actually is on Romcom. Um, and what we had there as well is we wanted to continue to build that relevance through a key integration within that romantic comedy that is Be My Glory. And what we had was in the finale of the show, we had our levels um, and our brand. Um, absolutely linked into the action. So, you know, product placement gone next level um, with, with that integration of our gaming levels. 
what is nice to know is that the video views of the whole on of the king show was 925 million people so again we have 925 million views sorry so we were always present in every single living room um computer computer screen and tablets in china next then the next phase was really about you know we've done a lot about building that link between um king of glory our products the characters really leveraging that um ip and um and the visual id identity of the of the game but we wanted to go again one step further and that one step further was esports um as antonia said you know there are millions of um conversations happening every second on esports and we wanted to make sure that not only we created a tournament but that the people already had the opportunity to compete against their hero and this gives us um, like an extra 60 million um unique views just by playing that pro league against um amateurs competition and really build into that self-confidence you know what more confidence to give than build than bitting your own era their own game next And then with that, we built also a live streaming community. So again, thinking about being part of the action, uh, encouraging the conversation around the product, the game, um, and really leveraging the people that know more than us about that environment and, and about that role that gaming play within the culture of the Gen Z in China. Next. So in summary, what we've done is we could have just built an extra level in the game, but we didn't stop there. What we did is we built a complete ecosystem. So started with leveraging that game IP and, and leveraging kind of the digital channels, which again is something that you would expect from a brand, but we also had it a very highly relevant. So really partnering with more sites um, within China. Then we move to the next level again um, by integrating within uh, social, so the social competition, whether it's uh, through ByteDance, which is uh, TikTok in China, uh, or through the key uh, social amplifying um, platforms within China. But we didn't only want it to be digital. We really wanted to go all in. And this is when we added that kind of mass media. So the out of home, the um, the OTV through, through Be My Glory, and the change in POS um, in, in store. So what we had was really leveraging the IP at every single touch point. So we always are uh, top of mind. Next. Okay, uh, thank you Aurelia and Antonia for the great sharing of um, RTD Team Can in China. So I uh, just wanna show you this photos because this is the team. This is the, the credit goes to this team because this is our Nestle uh, Song Korea the China RTD team. So um, the credit goes to them, like I said, and you can see they are still waiting for you guys to go to Beijing. They're standing in the cold like, like a popsicle, <laughs> waiting for you guys to go to bring them, to bring all of you to uh, Universal Studio. So um, no, just kidding. Um, <clears throat> as a result, well, it's, it's tremendous. Like. Um, Antonia has shared at the beginning, we have uh, tough challenges, uh, but lucky enough that we are getting a, a tremendous result. Our recruitment on age 18 to 25 uh, had a significant growth of nearly 25%. Uh, we have su uh, successfully bridged the gaming and the renowned honor of Kings with Nestle Teen Cans through when we were performing our social listening. So while we have also increased the consideration for 11%, Due to our strong relevancy with the target group. So our learning from this year is if you are investing on an IP and believe in it, stick with it. Like we have been cooperating uh, on gaming and with Honor of Kings for four consecutive years. So also if you're discovering uh, discover additional values from the IP, don't just have it on your pack. Think out of the box, like how we have our QR code on each can to unlock a surprising moment that links to the game. If your budget is as tight or limited as ours, and if you cannot sponsor an official gaming tournament, create your own like us. Don't underestimate the power of IP, of your IP, of your imagination. So last but not least, a smart integration like Aurelia has mentioned, 
on the last slide, trigger your consumer at every touch point. So before we end the session, I would like to show you um, <clears throat> a video of this showcase of Nescafe RTD 10 Kin on gaming with the owner of Kin. Honor of Kings was the perfect partner to go on Nescafe and Tencent partner to grab the attention of a generation through gaming. With 100 million unique daily users, Honor of Kings was the perfect partner to deliver a one-of-a-kind 360 campaign designed for the Gen Z audience. To celebrate, Tin Can got a makeover with game characters matched to coffee strength. The campaign was orchestrated around a three-step activation and out-of-home execution. Step one aimed to build strong online communities, step two leveraged eSport, and step three focused on cross-screen. Step one, community building through social promotions and a wide range of gaming influences from Kung Bao to Xiao Bai. Step 2. Esports Competition Nescafe created a tailor-made King Pro League esports competition where casual gamers were given a chance to compete against pro team. The event was live-streamed on China's top gaming platforms. To support this unique activation, new levels of the game were created especially for the competition. The QR code on the tin can became the perfect gaming companion and unlocked exclusive content, putting the consumer at the heart of the action. Step 3. Cross-screen strategy. Who doesn't like a good rom-com? You Are My Glory is a romantic comedy dedicated to Honor of Kings, the Nescafe Tencent joint IP featured in the show's finale, watched by over 3.8 billion fans. Thus, the campaign dominated mobile and streaming environments and made it into every living room in China. Nescafe delivered an out-of-home strategy incorporating the game's visual identity to grab our audience's attention on their commute. Nescafe successfully tapped into gaming culture, made their brand more relevant to the Gen Z audience and delivered beyond expectations by driving an increase in online sales of 24.3% and a total category growth of 4%. Wow. I'm sure there are a lot of questions waiting for you. It's Q&A sections now. So. Question, please. Okay, the first question is, how did you provide the Gen Z audience? Where did the insight come from? And following on from, how did you select which game to partner with? Interesting questions. Really, I wanna, you wanna start first and I'll cover you. Sure. So um, the first part of Gen Z audience is we did have a lot of insight from the games we had in 2019 and 2020. We also connected it with different studies, whether it's Kantar, Nielsen or Densu's own. Um, and then how did we select which game to partner with? It's really about so King um, Honor of King is the number one game in China with more than 100 million unique unique players at a given time and we worked with Tencent to understand what was the overlap between um, their audience and our audience and that overlap was um, amazing. I mean, most of the audiences we were looking for um, were, were on the game as well and, and they, were, they were kind of active players. Anyone else? Do you want me to go to the next question, Lucky? Oh, no, I, I, I can read it out. I just, um, oh, okay. 
whether you do want to add on anything is on on the answers. Otherwise, I can go on the next questions. Um, what are your thoughts about the gaming industry and its future impact on the FMCG industry? Do, uh, do you want me to go first and then um, maybe Aurelia and, and Marcus, you can jump in? Yes, um, This is the, the virtual panel world that we live in now. <laughs> um, so your uh, the thoughts on the gaming industry, uh, like for us, it's definitely an area, um, you know, I, I work in the global team here at Nestle that we're looking at as a, as a I guess it's a, a trend that's now. Um, and it's not, you know, it, it's here now and there's many different ways that you can get into gaming. Um, I think there's different ways in. I think this is the example we showed you today is um, an excellent example of full integration and truly adding value to uh, gamers, um, you know, the where they are and, and, and you know, um, integration of product and trial, et cetera. Um, so I think that's really where we see lots of opportunities um, to go into the near future. Um, there's also gaming, which is a lot more I guess, uh, you know, you're just integrating into a game like Candy Crush, for example. So I think our ambition is to when we're when we're doing gaming is to go go big and, and make sure we're integrating and adding value to the to the game and the consumers lives. Um, I think more FMCGs will continue to invest in this space um, globally. I think it's a way of connecting with a consumer in a way that's very different and not a traditional media channel because we know it's harder and harder to reach, especially younger consumers in traditional channels. So I think the um, the uh, attention that this this area will get will, will continue to grow. And I know um, certainly as a business, we're looking at it a lot more for future uh, planning. Yes, so exactly, Antonia. The the thing we have with the gaming industry is it's bigger than the sport industry and the entertainment industry put together. So it's probably one of the industry that is the most underlooked or overlooked by uh, by FMCG um, company. And the with uh, the gaming industry and because we are at the infancy of the gaming industry, we still have an opportunity to create the roadmap for the future. So by being early adopter, we can not only um, gain like the, the, the early adopter benefits, uh, but we can also nearly dictate what the gaming industry is for FMCG and the role that um, FMCGs have to play within the gaming industry. Um, there's also more and more um, um, placements that are happening in media that are happening in game uh, or around the game and this is something that FM, as FMCG companies we we need to be aware of and we need to be part of because if you're not part of this then your competitors will so it's always about how can we be a step ahead and how can we make things um, you know our way in in the gaming world. And I think the, the occasion, it's really um, the importance of this campaign uh, that we are bonding with, a ga with gaming. So uh, the stimulation from a product that actually um, give it a kick, a boost, uh, that, that also links very strong with, with the gaming industry. So um, I think this is um, like Aurelia and uh, Antonia has just mentioned, I think uh, you, have to, you have to make up your mind uh, whether it links with your product, links with your brand, what are the occasions that you can reach them with? I think that's that's more important than just looking at gaming as, as the future impact to FMCG industry. So I think this is a, a little bit more important to think about. Very interesting, Marcus. Okay, the next question. What would you say that this game synergy is repeatable with other Nestle products or brands? Or would you now look at Rich Jensa through alternative channels? I think this is a great question. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll kind of build on what Marcus was just saying because it's a question that we tackle a lot as a, a global team should we answer you know should we just be there for all of our products for the sake of reach or actually the more strategic decision is what brands are most suitable for this area 
And exactly as you were saying, Marcus, this is about stimulation and that's what coffee does. Um, but equally, you know, another one of our mega brands, Kit Kat, that's all about taking a break, right? So if I've gamed for six hours, should I take a break? <laughs> Have a Kit Kat, it's synonymous with Kit Kat. It, it talks really well to, to kind of um, the positioning and, and the personality of the brand as well. Is it right for all of our brands? I, I don't think it is actually. I think we need to really think about what is the right um, areas so it doesn't feel forced and it actually can connect with that particular game. Um, you know, I think we're always looking at diff so just the second part of the questions, would you now look to reach Gen Z through alternative channels? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, the, the kind of easier days of media planning um, are, are well and truly over. We have to, you know, the, the, um, the space is more fragmented, but also interesting than it's ever been. So there's always other ways and other channels that we need to reach um, different generations through um, and this is something that we, we con constantly test and learn and, and again sharing great kind of case studies like this globally helps to kind of stimulate that that thinking across the business to ensure that we are testing and learning and, and trying different channels and um, be it gaming um, or, or other alternative platforms. I don't know Marcus or Aurelia you've got any, uh, any build on that question? Well at least at least in 20 22, 2023, we are sticking with gaming, uh, be it with Honor of Kings or with all their other IP gaming industries that came to us, knocked on our door, asking if Nestle is interested on a uh, co-partnership with them. So we are, uh, we, we made our final decision that this year we are sticking with Honor of Kings. So, um, uh, but just like I said, I think we're going to stick with gaming for a little while uh, because is like I said, it's perfect location, and we and we have we have already claimed the territory. Yeah, I would say on on my side, when we're talking about gaming, I think we also need to open up our horizon. Gaming happens in many ways, whether it's as you said, Antonio, you candy crush on your on your phone or for the most uh, kind of advanced markets, maybe like what is our first um, metaverse um, activation. But, but I think it's really about having an open mind and think about what is the right occasion? Is my audience there? Um, and, and what value add can my brand bring to the experience? Because I think we're now coming into a world where we don't talk about advertising anymore with some part takes talks about advertainment, I think that's how it's called, but it's really about how do we build the right experience and the right value exchange, because at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want to connect the right brands with the right customer. Very interesting. I think we are all looking forward to the new items in the honor of Kings or any more game that would be coming in China. I love to be in China to play with this game. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. The next questions, um, how did your partner with China and Chinese player? Oh, uh, simple. Uh <laughs> 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 I thought I really want to jump in with this because uh, Densu really uh, of great help with your team in China to bridge us with uh, Honor King and also with other uh, gaming IPs. So um, we did it through agency and uh, we, we did it through uh, Densu. So there's another discipline, I think, uh, working on sports marketing uh, within Densu. Like what we have as well, so we, we have verticals and we have different partnerships um, along those verticals. So gaming is one of them, sport it is another one of them, entertainment. But it's really about when you have a brand um, as big and in that case as bold as Nestle, uh, it's more like which partner not to choose. As, as Marcus was saying, you know, partners are coming to us saying, can we work with Nestle? So it is really about um, building the right partnership for Nestle so the brand can shine just like what we um just like the activation we had with with tin can and i think uh, we, we we did the right choice and we chose the right team uh we chose the right team that um before they went before they they went you know all the way up we partnered with them so uh, because i was a talent management and sports marketing before 
So I was working with the Chinese national teams as a as a talent manager before, and I know how difficult to work with the the players who are already top stars. So we, I think, it's it's very strategic that we chose the the right team to work on, and they won the champion. And、uh, I think this is how it leads to to now. And the last question is: Are there any remarkable challenges while doing this campaign? And I think there are always a lot of challenges when we're working on our <laughs> campaigns, not just this campaign.、Uh, just like I said, you know, you're working with a partner. You're not just you're not working with your、uh, with your own brand team. You're not just working with the channel. Channel uh, 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 development team. You're not just working within Nestle. You're working with some other partners. You're, you're working with Honor of Kings. You're working with、um, KPL. So you're working with, with a lot of people. So、um, the challenges is um, um, synchronization to have the single-minded、uh, understanding of where, as a brand, we, where we want to go. And how we want to bring everyone together to achieve this. Yeah, agree. It's always it's always the biggest challenge, right? Because we <laughs> we've got our brands、um, and and how we want to position the brand in that particular area. And of, co- of course, when you're partnering with an IP, it's also you know super strong and well renowned. Where's the balance? So how do you get the best out of both、um, brands、uh, to ensure it's successful partnership? Um, and I think that's you know I, I know with your background, Marcus, that <laughs> that would have been a a challenge that you faced many times. But I think you know you, you can say it for a lot of partnerships that we do across our business. It's it's just making sure that it's a winning、um, a winning combination all together and、um, and balance, getting the balance right. Okay, and that is our last questions. Ah,、oh, okay. Thank you so much,、um, Antonius, Marcus, Aurelia. Sixteen million unique will. Oh, and twenty-four point three growth. That is amazing. <laughs> okay. Thank yous again for the insightful sections that you have delivered, and huge thank you for everyone here for attending these sections. I hope you enjoy hearing from our industry experts and feel inspired by their sharing. Digital accelerations play the big roles in marketing, and there are always endless opportunity to look forward to. Don't forget to join our Nestle Digital Volleyer in an interactive fireside chat and hear what they have to say about what it's like to work. Grow and make an impact in e-commerce, digital marketing at Nestle in the next sections. This one you don't want to miss. So make sure to go and click the links on the chat to go directly to the next sections, or you can go back to the main agenda page and join the sections from there. Don't panic if you miss out any of our next level sections because the recording will be、um, up soon for your personal recapping. Feel free to share your thought about today's next level sections and tag us in LinkedIn with the hashtag next level 2020. Have a great day, great evening, everyone, and I see you at the next sections. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.